Hey everyone and welcome. Um, it's Mike Punch Chess here and welcome to another video. I've got another Rashid Nesmetnov game here today, but this time he's playing Paul Keres. And I didn't actually know these two played. Um, so shout out to Terry Gomez for recommending this game to me. And I've had a look through and it's actually a really good game. Basically throughout the whole game Nesmetnov has a great advantage, but somehow manages to lose the game. Mainly due to Paul Keres' good defensive play, as you'll see. So this game was played in the USSR Championship in 1959. Nesmetnov is playing white and Paul Keres is playing black, so we're going to look at it from their perspective. So Nesmetnov played e4, Keres played e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop b5 and then a6, and Nesmetnov puts his bishop to a4, and we're into a closed Ray Lopez with knight to f6, white castles, black plays b5 as bishop b3, Bishop e7 was played in the game. Now it's best for black not to get too greedy in this opening. If knight takes e4, white may have an advantage with rook to e1. If d5, then white can play knight to c3. And if knight takes c3, d takes c3. White's actually got a decent position because two pieces are attacking this e-pawn, two pieces are attacking this d-pawn. Of course black's a pawn up, but if bishop e6 to defend one of the pawns, then white can just play moves like a4 b4, a5, and again, this pawn is still under attack. If black defends, white has moves like knight to d4, with the pawn e5 pinned. And after knight takes, c takes, white's got a great position, and black's got a lot of defending to do. Black's a pawn up, but white has got full development early, he's got to get bishop out, um, and should be able to get regain one of their pawns very soon. So in the game, Keres played the normal move bishop to e7, and Nesmetnov now hits out straight away with d4. I think the point of this move is that if black takes this pawn off with e takes d4, white will play e5, attacking the knight on f6. If knight to e4, white can go bishop d5, attacking the knight on e4. If knight c5, then just knight takes d4. Bishop b7 to support the knight, but then knight to f5. And white's got a really nice advantage. For instance, let's say black castles in this position. White can play queen g4, threatening mate on g7, and if g6, there's moves like rook e1 because the g-pawn is pinned, white defends the e-pawn, and moves like bishop h6 will be coming very soon against black. So maybe taking's pawn is suicidal. For this reason, Keres just played d6, supports his e5 pawn, Nesmetnov played c3, black castled, h3 was played to stop any bishop g4 ideas, and black played bishop to b7, and now bishop to c2 was played. Now the typical move here for white is actually rook e1, and if rook e8, white can play knight b to d2. And the main moves actually in this position are bishop f8, a4, h6, bishop c2. Takes, takes, and then knight to b4, and white usually drops a bishop back to b1, with black coming in with c5, white plays d5, and black goes knight to d7. It's basically all to play for, this is kind of like a main line, and there's so much theory surrounding uh, the Ray Lopez that you can honestly get lost in all the theory. But of course at this time, maybe in 1959, there obviously wasn't as much theory as there is today. But Nesmetnov anyway played bishop c2 here, a very flexible move. Again, maybe white just wants to create a battery with this bishop and queen, this is the usual idea. And white also has ideas of knight bd2, knight to f1, and rook to e1 of course. But um, I actually think bishop c2 wasn't a great move because if black now decided to play e takes d4 and c takes d4, black can play knight to b4 um, and attack this bishop on c2 and attack the pawn on e4. White's going to lose the Ray Lopez bishop. Um, I don't really think we want this, so I think bishop c2 was a mistake. But Keras didn't really pick up on it. He played knight to b5 instead. Rook to e1 was played to support the e-pawn and Keras played c5. So okay, they've got a good position. Nesmetnov developed his knight, black took on d4, white recaptured, and black went rook c8. On the open file, hitting the bishop on c2, and Nesmetnov just played d5. So locks in this bishop on e7, locks in the bishop on b7, um, and black's got a very cramped position, and de definitely white is doing a lot better here. Keros continued to try and develop with knight to d7. And Nesmetnov played the flexible move knight to f1, probably going to reroute the knight back to g3, or even e3 perhaps in this uh, game. So Keres played queen c7, attacks the bishop, the bishop just retreats back to b1, and this is kind of a typical manoeuvre. 
you've got to keep that bishop safe and basically there's meant obviously you're going to attack Keras on the king's side with all these bishops uh, coming raking down the board and the knights are coming in very soon and I actually really hate Keras's next move and I think a lot of people on chessgames.com have criticized it so we played bishop d8 here this is a weird move it doesn't look very natural basically it stops these two rooks from connecting I don't really know what bishop d8 does okay it protects this knight on a5 yeah, but it also a very awkward move. I'm not sure why he played it. Maybe he wanted to move his queen back to b8 and then reroute the bishop to b6. But even so, it's going to take a lot of time. And white can just play bishop to e3 at any point as well. So this is quite unusual. Now in the game here, maybe he should have played f5 instead. It still isn't great for black because then e takes f5, knight c4, and knight to d4. The pawn on e, the e file is pinned by this rook. But even so, if bishop takes d5... Knight to e6, we get into some complications after bishop takes, pawn takes, and knight to f6. This would probably suit Nesmetinov to be honest, but even so, after a4, b4, b3, and knight to a3, we get into a very interesting position with white as slightly better. This e6 pawn is very awkward for black to deal with, um, and maybe white can even just take this knight off on a3. I don't think he would ever play that though, I think it's better to keep this bishop on, but even so, it leads to a very interesting position. Whereas bishop d8 here looks very weird to me anyway. And then Smetnov continued with knight to g3. So getting these knights into the attack. Keras played b4. And black's position to me looks very awkward. I'd be very scared of white's progress here if I was playing black. If this was a classical game I'd be quite worried. I don't know, my pieces just look really awkwardly placed. This bishop looks really weird. This knight on the, uh, the side of the board and this bishop on d8. There's no cohesion in black's position. And there's better now just played bishop to d3. Maybe just preparing to hit this a6 pawn. And after knight c4 was played, there's better just played queen to e2. So they created a battery against this knight. And this uh, also they're going to hit this a6 pawn. So to stop losing the a6 pawn, Keras played a5. And there's better played b3 to attack the knight, which jumps into a3. Now I don't think white will take this off because if you do and his b takes a3, queen e3 and queen c5, I think black has actually equalized already. The position is no longer awkward because this bishop's going to come out very soon. And the only problem black's got really is trying to develop this bishop on b7. But they've got a quite a nice stronghold with this a3 pawn. And we've seen this in the Le Chess Zero games and Alpha Zero games where they try and get these pawns on a3 or a6 or h6 and h3. So in the game, just as Metnov just sidestepped everything, bishop to e3, and now he's controlling all of the art squares. And maybe even rook c1s is coming in as well. Um, black's really struggling. Keras played g6, and of course rook ac1 as predicted. The queen retreats back, and now as Metnov played bishop h6, attacking the other rook, which go, has to go to e8, there's no other square. So I think we can agree white is in a lot of control here, maybe even total control. The only saving grace I can see is maybe if black can get a knight c5 in, but um, even so, it's not looking too good for black here. And there's Benov tries to stick the boot in, he plays bishop b5, attacking the knight on d7 and pinning it, so stopping any knight c5 ideas that we just recommended. If the knight on a3 takes this bishop, I think the queen will just recapture, and again, this bishop on d8 looks very awkward. I've put an arrow here because I think black would love to have it on f8. If it was an f8, it'd be a great position for black to be in, most likely. Of course, the knight's still attacked on e7. So black would have to play rook e7. And I think here white just plays bishop e3. And I've put here white is in total control. Again, white's got no issues. They've got a very nice position. They've got a slight edge. Nothing too major, but still, it'd be a great uh, position to grind out as white. Back to the game, though. So after bishop b5, Keras played rook to e7 to protect the knight. And there's Metnov played knight to h4. Keras did take this bishop off. I think that makes sense because the knight is weird on a3. So getting rid of one of white's good pieces. Queen takes b5 is played. And they go knight to f8 to um, maybe even try and double rooks. And this rook now is released to protect this bishop. Maybe even go rook c7. And I think it was Larson who said, uh, give me a knight on f8 and I'll defend any position. And this is exactly what Keras has done here. With the knight on f8, there's no mate. Fingers crossed. But uh, he's playing Nesmetnov, and he, Nesmetnov now comes up with a wonderful move. Um, knight h, f5. Sacking the knight. Attacking this rook. 
on this e7. Also, maybe even trying to take this pawn on d6. Keres accepts the sacrifice, takes the knight, and the knight recaptures, and the knight's attacking the rook on e7. And I've put uh, a load of arrows here. But basically, the idea for white is just to play maybe queen to d3 or do a rook lift and go to g3 and attack this king. That's basically white's plan. Kind of caveman like. Keres continued, then rook ec7. So attacking this rook on c1. Rook takes c7 was played, queen takes c7. So black's a piece up, and white's position all hinges now on if they can attack black and uh, win this game. Rook e3 was played by Nesmetnov, swinging the rook across. Keres plays the best move actually here, bishop f6, um, supporting this g7 square. This is vital, it stops white's pieces infiltrating. Rook g3 was played with check, and Keres blocks with the knights on g6. Now, in the next move, I think that's meant to play the natural move h4, uh, prepare to play h5, and attack this knight on g6. But actually, uh, Stockfish recommends bishop e3 here, and I don't think this is very natural, but um, it gets to an equal game, supposedly. So if black goes rook f8, Stockfish really wants to play bishop to b6. And after queen c1 check, king h2, and bishop c8, Basically, Stockfish's plan is just to take all the pawns off. Knight takes d6, bishop h4, rook f3, bishop g5, and then knight takes c8, queen takes, and bishop c5. After a series of moves, white hoovers up another pawn, bishop e7, takes, takes, queen a6, knight g6. And I put equal game question mark. So what's going on here? Because white's three pawns up, but black has the piece, they have the knight. Um, so is this equal, or who's winning this game? Well, Stockfish and other engines certainly give it as equal. I'm not so sure. But uh, who would you rather play here? I'm not entirely sure about this. I probably prefer to play white. I think white may have more chances. It's going to be very difficult for black to try and win this game, I would imagine. I think if white plays rook f6 next move, they have ideas of rook to b6 here and win this other pawn. So it's very tricky for black. But do let me know what you think in the comments. Because I'm very curious to know if you'd play bishop e3 here or h4. Anyway, Nesmetnov played h4. I think this is more natural. Prepares h5. And in the game now, Keres played rook a8. But actually, king h8 was the better move. Just getting off this pin. I think this is again more natural. I don't know why I didn't play this. Because if h5, then black has knight to f4. And black is actually winning this position now. Because rook g4, just knight takes h5. After king h8, Stockfish actually says queen d3 is the best move for white. But black defends with rook g8, h5, knight to e7, takes, and knight takes. And black's doing absolutely fine, is just the piece up. So yeah, I think Keres is missing natural moves, but he played rook a8 in the game. And there's Metro tries to get his queen around, queen e2. Now Keres plays king h8, so gets his king off the g-file. h5 was played. And first Keres plays an intermezzo move here, bishop a6, so finally unleashes their white squared bishop, queen f3 was played, and Keres played queen to d8, so giving back the piece. I think if black tries to keep hold of the knight with knight to f4, white comes in with queen g4, French play bishop g7. And again black has to just give up the knight because knight g6 is the only way to defend the position. And white can continue with bishop g5, takes takes, queen d8, White can take on g6, queen takes g5, but actually black loses here with rook takes g5, h takes g6, because now white just hoovers up these pawns, and rook takes e5, and white's going to win this endgame with an extra two pawns. So Keres was, uh, played a very good defensive move, queen to d8 here, just giving back the knight and accepting that he needs to do so. So Nesmetnov captured on g6, f takes g6, attacking the knight, which jumps back to e3. Keres goes e7, queen e7. Nesmetov attacks bishop on f6. He retreats his bishop backwards, and Nesmetov plays queen to e3. So now, black has the two bishops, but still white has a slight advantage here. Bishop c8 was played. Bishop g5, attacking the queen. The queen goes to a7, and Nesmetov plays knight to h6. And now there's a trade of queens. Queen takes queen, rook takes and bishop to a6. So here it's still given that white has a slight advantage, just due to this knight and this weak d6 pawn. I mean, white could play knight to f7 if they wished. First though, Nesmetov played rook to f3. 
Rook to f8 was played, and Knight to f7 check. King g8 is forced, and Nesmetnov took the pawn on d6. Knight takes d6. Interestingly here though, um, Knight d8 was a better move. Because if Rook takes Rook, g takes Bishop f8 to protect the pawn, and Knight c6. White's just going to pick up the pawn on a5. And uh, this was actually a better way to go for White if um, Nesmetnov wanted to win the game. But I don't think knight takes d6 is too bad, it's a pawn after all. Knight takes d6 was played. Keres took the rook on f3. G takes f3 was played. Bishop f8 attacking the knight on d6. And now we're into an end game, a very interesting one. Black's got two bishops. But um, Black suddenly finds himself a pawn down, so how are they going to win this game? So Nesmetov played knight e8. Keres gets his king up. And knight c7 attacking the bishop, which jumps in to d3. And Nesmetnov goes knight to e6. And this is all looking very nice for white, I'll be perfectly honest. They're just a whole pawn up. So how did Nesmetnov go wrong? So Keras played bishop to d6. Knight d8, check. Another fine move by Nesmetnov. King e8. And here it's this move where white seems to have missed the win. In the game, Nesmetnov played knight c6. A perfectly natural looking move, attacking the a5 pawn. But actually knight b7 is better, attacking the bishop and the pawn. If the bishop jumps in to c7 to protect the pawn, white has the nice move d6, attacking the bishop. If it goes to b6, then white can play bishop to e3, attacking the bishop. And there's several moves that uh, black can go for here. If bishop d8, then d7 is very nice. And if king takes d7, there's knight to c5. And king e7, knight takes the bishop. An easy win. If bishop takes bishop, white can play f takes e3. If bishop to b1, white has f4. And if black starts going after these pawns, bishop takes a2. There's knight takes a5 to support the b3 pawn. e takes f4 and white just plays e5. f takes e3 is of no consequence because they've got e6. Um, and white's going to play d7 check next move. For instance, let's say pawn here, there's d7 check, king to e7, king to f2, and white can play knight to b7 next move and queen this pawn. An easy win. And again, after bishop e3, the last move we'll look at is bishop to a6, which is the best move, attacking the knight. But even so, bishop takes b6, bishop takes, takes on a5, king d7, bishop takes b4 and g5. So now white has two passed pawns and again this should be an easy win and one end game. So if we go back to this knight b7 move, another option was to play king to d7 to protect the bishop. But even so, I think after knight takes d6, king takes and bishop to d8. After king c5, white can take the pawn off. And after several more moves, king g2, h5, um, we get into this position with bishop b5, white just plays bishop to d6, and there's too many pawns on dark squares. Let's say g4, bishop takes b4, takes an f3 and a4. Again, white has this nice majority on this side of the board and two passed pawns. Um, it's going to be a very easy win. So yeah, there's no question that white's missed the win here with knight to b7. But even so, it still should be okay for white with knight c6. Bishop c7 was played to protect the pawn. So after bishop c7, I thought bishop e7 was interesting, but it actually leads to a drawn game, because black plays bishop b5. If white goes d6, attacking the bishop on c7 and attacking the pawn, black has to be clever, just bishop takes the pawn, bishop takes, and takes the knight. If bishop c7, there's a4, takes on e5, a takes b3, a takes b3. Um, and after several more moves, this should be a drawn end game with both sides having opposite coloured bishops. So in the game of the bishop to c7, Nesmetnov played d6. Uh, I'm not really sure about this move because basically Keres just takes it. It allows white to take on a5, but now the king's coming up and black's dominating a lot of squares now. Nesmetnov continued with knight to c4, but now the point is that Keres can play bishop to b1 and suddenly white's pawns are very weak. To save the game here, I think Nesmetnov should have played bishop to d2. Because if bishop takes a2, there's knight takes d6, which um, can bail out white with king takes. Bishop takes b4, king to e6, king g2, and bishop takes. And again, we're into an offset called bishop endgame. Should be a draw. 
So bishop d2 was the last bailout move for Nezmetinov, but he messed up, to be quite honest. He played f4. After e takes f4 by Keres, he played e5. And then just bishop c5. It looks as though white was making some progress, but now we see that uh, black's just going to win this game. Bishop takes f4, and bishop takes a2. And the point is, after knight d2, this knight is now limited to protecting this b3 pawn. And it's suddenly becoming a very defensive piece. After king e6, there was king f1. King f5 attacking the bishop, which has to retreat to e3. Bishop takes, f takes, and then Keres just plays g5. This starts launching his pawns up the board. King e2 was played, now h5. King f3, white's got to guard the h pawn. h4 was played, king g2 and g4. Um, and again, we see this knight is just limited to guarding this b3 pawn. King f2 was played, Keres took the pawn. King went backwards and h3. The king goes up and then just king f5. The king goes back and now Keres comes up with a genius move. What would you play as black here? I'll give you five seconds to think of a good move. So Keres played bishop takes b3. Sacking his bishop. This was very brave in a classical game. But he must have calculated everything. After knight takes b3, the king went to e4. There's meant to have put his knight into d4, but then just king takes e3, and it's three pawns versus a knight. After knight to f5 check though, and king d3, Nesmetnov resigned the game, um, because there's nothing he can do to stop this b4 pawn from queening. There's no way for you to get your knight into these squares to um, stop the pawn. And amazingly, Kerez won this game as black against a relentless Nesmetnov attack. So... I actually think this was Nesmetnov's game to lose. I think Paul Kerr has played a decent game, but um, basically he just found himself in a one end game position. And he, he won from there, to be fair, but um, Nesmetnov missed a lot of chances to draw or even win this game. But even so, it was very interesting to look at. So thank you for recommending it to me. If you've got any other games that you'd like to recommend, just comment below and I'll try and um, do some analysis on them. But anyway, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe and just comment. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.